Welcome back to the stovetop. Please bear with any background noise that this camera's microphone might pick up. I'm in the flight path of an international airport and it seems like air traffic is picked up only because I decided to film a video right now. Also, I'm near a federal highway, so there could be some background noise from that. On April 18th of 2021, I recorded a video for this channel where I made Jiffy corn pudding for the first time. Now, I am not a very good cook. I never claimed to be, and this isn't a cooking channel. This is kind of a blue collar industrial channel, but I thought it might be something fun to do. Something where I could show that if somebody like me who's terrible at cooking can make this, anybody can make this. Now, I never said that during the video, but maybe I should have. I was inspired to make this because I had tried out Tennessee corn pudding at Calhoun's in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'll include a link to their menu in the description section below. I wanted to try to replicate it at home. So I found a recipe on a website called cooks.com for Jiffy corn pudding. Here's a printout of that recipe. I'll include a link to this in the description section. This is to show that I actually followed a recipe in the video. I didn't just make this up. Now that video got 12,000 views. That's an astronomical number for any one of my YouTube channels. As a matter of fact, this is a B channel. This isn't even my primary channel. And that's, that's a lot of views for any sort of video that I make. I gained 62 subscribers from that video as well, which is kind of unusual because most of my videos are about plastic injection molding, not cooking. So I don't understand that, but that's what happened. Additionally, I got a lot of comments on the video and I still get comments on the video to this day. Most of the comments are people telling me that I made it wrong or that I should use eggs. Now, I followed the recipe. It didn't call for eggs. And I, at no point in the video did I say this is the one and only way to make Tennessee corn pudding or Jiffy corn pudding. I, I, I never said that. There are other recipes out there. So I decided to go back and watch the video and just see if there was anything in there that maybe I could have done differently or whatnot. And after watching it, I don't think so. Now the audio quality wasn't as good back then because I had a different camera, but I painfully watched the video. And for those of you who make YouTube videos, you know what I'm talking about. It's kind of difficult to go back and watch your work. I mean, it's, it's hard enough in the editing process, but to go back two years later, because it's April 8th, 2023 right now, almost two years later, uh, I, it, it helped to have a little bit of bourbon. As a matter of fact, it helps to have some bourbon while you're making videos. Yeah, that's better. And I decided that I should try to do this again. I should look for another recipe, but something that's very similar and try to make this again and just see what happens. So I found a recipe on the Jiffy website. Here's a printout of the recipe on the website. I'll include a link for that in the description section below. And if you look at the ingredients and the instructions, they're virtually the same. The main difference is that it calls for two eggs, which I'll be using in this video. Now the cooking temperature is slightly different and the cooking time is slightly different, but otherwise the process is pretty much the same. The recipe calls for one can of whole kernel corn, canned corn more or less. So I'm gonna be using this Del Monte golden white corn. It doesn't have a pop top like the corn I used in the original recipe. So I'm gonna remove the lid with a can opener and I'll be straining it with the strainer so that it's drained. Also, it calls for a can of cream corn. And I've got my choice of Del Monte sweet corn cream style, no salt added, or Del Monte white corn cream style. I'm gonna use the sweet corn cream style. Also in the original video, I used unsalted butter. This time I'm going to use a stick of salted butter. In the video, I used the Jiffy corn muffin mix from a bulk box that I bought at Sam's Club. This time I'm just using the individual box. This is the correct quantity according to both 
recipes. So let's get started. All right, so off camera, I've opened up both cans of corn. I've opened up the box of Jiffy Mix and I have beat two eggs in a bowl. I even used a whisk. So here's the stick of unsalted butter. I'm going to grease this pan according to the instructions. I don't understand why it calls for that when I'm just gonna pour melted butter in here, but I'm sure this is a part of the video where somebody says, you're greasing it wrong. You know what, make your own video, okay? That's one thing about the comments section. I don't mind people making comments, constructive criticism, that sort of thing, that's fine. But what I notice is you guys don't make your own videos. So when you've got the courage to do this yourself, uh, then you might see how uh, sometimes people who make videos are going to call you trolls. Now for the rest of the butter, I'm going to stick it in this measuring cup and put it in the microwave and melt it. Okay, it melted the entire stick in about 45 seconds. I'll go ahead and strain this corn over the sink. Let's add that. Strain this other can. And the cream corn doesn't need to be strained. But I will need a spatula here. You can see I'm somewhat of a messy cook too. Like I said in the beginning, never claim to be good at this. All right, then add the melted butter. I've rinsed the spatula off, and in this recipe it calls for one cup of sour cream. On the cooks.com recipe, it calls for eight ounces. That's probably the same. So I'll just mix up this sour cream out of this 15 ounce tub that's already been opened. And I'll try to measure about a cup. One thing I can say about this recipe is that it's making a lot more dirty dishes. I'm not liking it. So there's about a cup, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. And I'll just work that in. It says to blend it in. I've got the oven preheating to 375 degrees while I do this. Probably could have just eyeballed it and gone with roughly about half of that tub or one of the shorter tubs of sour cream. I'm blending it in, which to me means just kind of stir it into the mix. All right, in a separate bowl, beat two eggs, add them to the mix. So we'll go ahead and just dump that in there. Use the same spatula just to scrape out the bowl. Mix that in. Let's get this in the sink. Yep, making a lot of extra dishes. I'm trying to make sure that I stir it up good so the consistency is about even. And the oven is up to temperature. So everything looks pretty well blended to me. 
Now it's time to add the corn muffin mix or the uh, cornbread mix, corn muffin mix. I'll just pour in a little and stir it in. If I remember correctly, this is what I did in the other video. Just dumping the whole thing in just didn't seem to make a lot of sense because it's going to thicken this up. And I'm spilling some on the stove because, once again, I am a messy cook. Some of the chunks that come out of the box break up right away when I stir them around with the spatula. This kind of looks disgusting. There, that's all of it. All right, I think I've stirred that up good enough. So it says to bake it for 35 to 40 minutes. We'll do it for 37. 37, my girlfriend sucked 37 dicks. In a row? The instructions say, bake 35 to 40 minutes or until center is firm. After 39 minutes, I took it out. It had a crust, but you could tell that the center was still kind of liquidy because it kind of sloshed side to side. I put it back in for another 15 minutes. I took it out. The crust was more brown but it's still kind of sloshed side to side. I took a knife and I poked it to see if the center was firm. And when I pulled it out, I got what looks like butter on the end of the knife. I could tell that it was starting to solidify, but it still quite wasn't there. So I put it back in for another 10 minutes. This time taking it out, the crust is a lot more brown and after cooling for a few minutes, it's not really shifting side to side. I can't really say for certain by putting the knife into it that the center is solid, but this is corn pudding. This isn't corn cake. So I don't expect it to have the consistency of cake. I'm gonna let it cool for a few minutes and then dish it out and tell you what I think of it. So I've given it a little bit more than 20 minutes to cool off. I don't really know how long it needs to cool as there's nothing in the instructions about that. I just took a guess based on the fact that I know that after you cook a pie, you've gotta let it cool because the inside uh, stays hot for a long time or something as simple as a hot pocket out of the microwave. It's molten hot on the inside, but not necessarily that way on the outside. And that's something that I really don't like about instructions, whether it be for cooking or automotive repair or whatever it is. There aren't any extra instructions in there usually about what if something goes wrong or look for this or it could be that or these are very simple things that you can add to instructions to help out a novice because not everybody needs to be a chef or a licensed mechanic in order to do certain things so i just kind of took a guess at this as somebody who fixes things for a living i know that there are ways to fix things that maybe aren't in the instructions and i'm not talking about doing something in an unsafe manner or an illegal manner in some sort of way that's kind of a hack job but there, there's, there's more than one way to do something. And that's something about cooking as well. There are so many different renditions of a recipe. On my primary channel, I do amateur bartending. And I've had comments on those videos where people have told me that I'm making the cocktail wrong. 
do you know how many different recipes there are for this cocktail? This bar does it this way, this bar does it that way, you do it this way, I do it that way. And it's the same thing with cooking. While I was waiting for this to cool, I got another comment. They said, wrong pan. Really? This is the kind of pan that my wife makes cornbread in. So is it the wrong pan? That's your opinion. And I check this person's channel, like I do every time I get trolled, and it's the same thing. No videos. If you guys want to make a negative comment, that's fine. That's your right to do. But the fact that you don't have the courage to make your own video says something about you. And if you already know how to make this, why are you looking at other videos? Now, maybe you're looking to see if there's a different rendition of this that you might be able to borrow a pr procedure, a process off of to maybe make yours a little bit different, make yours to, to something that you hadn't considered before. I'll give you that. But otherwise, I think you're just out there on the internet trying to validate your feelings about cooking. Validate that you're doing it the right way and everybody else is doing it the wrong way. It's not my problem that you're insecure and I don't have to deal with trolls. So if you want to leave a comment, leave a comment, but understand that I have the right to respond to your comment in the same way you have the right to leave your comment. So let's get this thing cut open and let's just see how it turned out. Now I might have cooked it too long. That was an hour and five minutes, but I'm hoping that it kind of made a difference with this. Now, somebody's going to say I'm spooning it out with the wrong spoon, that I shouldn't serve it in a bowl or something else like that. Once again, that's your opinion. It's not a fact. So this is thicker in consistency than it was last time. And that's probably from leaving it in longer. But it's corn pudding. It's going to be a little bit thick, not necessarily runny. Let me let that cool for a few minutes and I'll give it a try. So you can see the steam coming off of it while I wait for it to cool. And I thought instead of just leaving the camera off, I would go ahead and talk about something else. On the Jiffy Mix recipe, it gives you the option of using vegetarian Jiffy corn muffin mix. I didn't even know there was such a thing. Or regular Jiffy corn muffin mix. So for the Karens out there of the world that, you know, just have their thing. They've even got Jiffy Mix for you girls. All right, let's give this a try. You can see the corn in there. Definitely feels like it's kind of moist. I can smell the corn. It smells like cooked corn, but it doesn't smell sweet. It's sweet in the middle and sweet towards the end, and you get a lot of the butter, a lot of buttery taste. It's not bad. I'd say it's not as sweet as the other recipe, but the other recipe really wasn't that sweet either. It's, it's, as far as I'm concerned, just sweet enough. If I could do anything different on this, I think I wouldn't have cooked it as long. I cooked it about an hour and five minutes. I think 45 minutes would be good and just let it cool long enough and it would be just fine. Otherwise though, it's corn pudding. And for somebody like me who will admit, I suck at cooking. If I can make this, Anybody can make this. I'm gonna put a link to the other video at the end of this video and in the description section below. I actually prefer that, that recipe over this recipe because that recipe requires one less ingredient and it doesn't make as many dirty dishes. Just my opinion. If you've got one of your own, make your own video. Link that in the comments instead of one of your remarks about how I'm doing it wrong. Thanks for watching. Hey, try not to suck any dick on the way through the parking lot. Hey, hey, you, get back here.